getting to the streaming now. It's preparing, so it should be one second. As done, redirecting. This is now streaming live on Facebook. We're good. Okay, great, great. We are live. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let me turn down the volume here and then I'm going to go come back over with you. All right, one moment. All right, George, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we are live on Facebook. I'm gonna go ahead and tag a few people and then I'm gonna introduce my very special guest. I wanna make sure I don't miss out anyone who said that they wanted to hear this for all of our basketball sports fans around the world because we both have friends and business connections and people in this industry that love basketball as much as we do. So let me go ahead and me just a few minutes. Now, do you know that you have it on um, closed caption on? Oh, I do. So you can. See. All right. Let me see if I can switch it because you can see it as we're speaking. Yeah, but it's not really coming in. It's real. You can't. It's 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 on the bottom of the page. Okay. You turn it off. Let me see if I can turn it off. Everything that we're saying is coming up, but it's being blocked out as well. Got it. Got it. And let me see, George, because I am not, I said it a long time ago, and I don't, I don't know if I remember how to take it off. Hold on a second. I think the last time I had it going, I saw that also, but I don't know if I know how to take it off right now. I don't. So. be able to. Uh... You should be able to go up to where your mute button is. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, give me a second. Hit the settings. Let me see if I can. There. I think you got it. You think so? Yep, it's not doing. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Oh, I see it. I see it. Is it off now? It is. Off. It is. No, it's still doing it. All right. It says off. Auto generated. Maybe it'll stop somewhere along the line. Hold on, hold on. Can you can you see it on yours? Preparing, so it should be one second. I see it on my cell phone, but I cannot. Not on my laptop, but I do see it on my cell phone. That means other people can see it. So you've got closed caption on somewhere. Uh, okay, give me a second. Give me one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't see, George, I don't see how to turn it off. Don't worry about it now then. All right, so we're just gonna roll with it. Okay. Roll so with it. All right, sound like a plan. Let me turn this down and come back over to you. And if you tell me, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, George. I want to thank you again for being here. I want to thank all of my guests. Actually, one individual that I was going to uh, tag, I see that they are already on. So give me one more second. I'm going to tag a couple more people. And we're going to get this thing going. I appreciate everybody who hops on. I'm not going to be Attending to my phone so much because I want to make sure that I attend to my guests. Let me just go ahead and share this. Give me one second, George. Now, while you're doing that, you did post something for other people to come in and see, right? To come yes. in. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I did. I sure did. 
And the reason why, so it's on, it's on my page as well, but I also want to make sure I'm going to put in the comments, I'm going to share the actual link. So if anyone wants to hop in or welcome, I will add them in. So I just actually put the Zoom link there so they don't have to search for it. So if they look down in the comments, if you want to hop on and be a live participant tonight, click the Zoom link and you will be live with us and I will allow you in. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and introduce my very, very special guest. This is someone that I have known for about 17 years. And the reason I say about 17 years is because this is my oldest daughter official uh, basketball coach when she really started playing basketball. So I want y'all to know that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times individuals will ask me, George, you know, Patricia, how did you get into this game of basketball? How did you become a referee? Because I don't necessarily, to most people don't look like the typical referee, but you know, my child started playing and then I uh, had a vested interest over time of getting into the actual getting into the game myself other than being a parent so I'm not going to go all into that I do want to I do have a picture that I'm going to sh share with everyone when you all first got started so people can see this connection here let me go ahead and officially introduce my special guest you all Please share this link if you know there's a parent, a coach, a player, student athlete, anyone associated with basketball or sports, you're going to want to hear this information. So my special guest tonight is Mr. George Howard, Coach George Howard. So he, he says he started coaching in 1985 in Chicago in the Pro-Am League. I had several Chicago Bulls and DePaul Blue Demons that played for me in Chicago. I went on to coach high school and professional basketball for 38 years. I'm a partner for one of the biggest AAU programs in the country. And you all, I can vouch for that for sure. He is representing that, that um, organization, All Ohio. Anybody that does not know, yes, All Ohio has a complete uh, boys uh, league team organization, as well as there's all Ohio girls on the other side. Um, he says, I've trained many pro athletes, college athletes, and I have been helping young men get recruited in college for over 40 years. So the reason that I decided to bring, you know, this individual that I personally know on is because I've witnessed, I've watched him mentor individuals. I've watched him be a part of this uh for it, not just as a coach, mentor, advisor, um, just, you know, taking people along, along their journey. So, and I, what I do want to say before I give the mic to George is I want to thank his beautiful wife, Chris, because when I reached out to him, is she, is she there, George? Yeah, she's sitting over there. All right. All right. Well, I want to give it, give it up to her because when I reached out to you, you know, I yeah, wanted yeah, she gets a shout out because you said, let me find out if Chris has anything planned for us. And I definitely want to respect the family because it's not just about game of basketball, but it's about family also. And so I thank her for letting you know that you all were fine. So without any further ado, I'm going to mute myself out. I'm going to be tagging. And this is an open mic. So George, go ahead. You have the floor wherever you want to start. Well, I mean, what, what, uh, um, you know, thank you for having me on. I appreciate you having me on. I, I, I feel honored. I've been knowing you for quite a long time. And um, I know you're blowing that whistle and everything down there in North Carolina. And you know what you're doing and you've been around the game. And I, re hey, when your daughter first started, she was an athlete. So if she was just getting into it. And that was just at a time where, you know, I was still with all Ohio basketball and, I decided to just put a program together, just out the clear blue sky, a girls program, because I knew some of the girls. And, you know, we end up having a really, really good team. And it was just, i tell you what, you know, I will say this, though. After that team, I didn't want to do it no more with girls. I wanted to stay with the boys because with women, it's a lot different. It's just a lot different. And I, 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 I tell you what, I tip my hat to all the women 
young ladies coaches out there that because women are totally different than the guys you know the mood swings and they cry when they lose and you know different things like that and but I enjoyed that group of girls. They, they were a, a great group of girls and they all went on to play real nice in high school and some of them went on to college. And, uh, and I see some of them now. I see Tashera works with our program. Um, and I see some of the young ladies, you know, like I saw your daughter a couple of years ago. So it's always good when you can see, like I see the young men, when you can see some of the young ladies that have played for you and they went on now to, some uh, they have children, some are married, um, and whatever they might be doing is just a pleasure. And that was one experience. I tell you what, we traveled everywhere. We had a good time though, and them girls balled out, and uh, uh, it was a great time. But I'm excited to be on your show, and and uh, you brought up some topics to me the other day that uh, is very you know dear to my heart. You know, talking about. Uh, you know, just parents and basketball, uh, you know, fans and basketball and um, coaches dealing with fans and basketball. And this year probably has been one of the toughest years that I've seen in AAU basketball when it comes to fans, uh, because the fans, I'll be real honest with you, they're just, the parents are just off the charts right now. It's at a whole different level. And, and I think one of the biggest problems is, and I'm one that keeps it really honest because I've been around this game for a long time and, and it's getting worse to me. And, and, and I stepped away from the, um, two years ago, I stepped away from the game for a year, um, for a complete year. Didn't go to any tournaments, um, any of our tournaments. I just stepped away from the game. Um, and one of the reasons was I just got burnt out in dealing with uh parents just you know I'd, I'd be running a tournament and and it was just always just complaint 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 you know and and it didn't matter what happened everything was a complaint and I just wanted to step away and just get away from it of course I couldn't stay away from it so I came back to the program last year part-time with COVID in full effect and then this year I've been back full-time and there's no greater joy, and I have the, 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 the joy that I have in helping young men, talking to parents, dads, and, and, and moms of our players, helping these kids get in college. Uh, it's no greater joy than that, and, and, and I've enjoyed it this spring, and matter of fact, all of our teams are down in Sandusky right now uh, with our big memorial tournament down there, uh, Sandusky, Ohio, where Cedar Point is, so it's, um, uh, you know, it, it's a joy to be back, but at the same time, you know, I've, I've had to put out so many fires, um, you know, in, in, in the tournaments that we've had, I've seen it at the tournaments we've been to, uh, where the parents are just over the top and, 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 and you know, fighting, cussing out the referees, hollering down at the coaches that their kids play for, which to me and in our program is a no-no. It's not going to happen in our program. Uh, we don't tolerate that. And um, and and, and I, I guess the biggest thing, and I talk to college coaches every day, Pat, and, I, and, and, and we talk about that. And college coaches deal with it too. You know, it's just getting to the point now to where, what do you do? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, you got dads that are, you know, trying to live through their kids, uh, maybe because they didn't make it as a basketball player or they weren't a basketball player, wanted to be a basketball player, or they just um, want their kids, they wanted more than their kids, you know. Um, and, and, and the other thing, Pat, is that, you know, uh, parents can make their kids not even want to play the game anymore. They can push their kids away from the game. They can push their kids so much that they, they take away the joy of the sport for the kid, you know? And, and I'll tell you something that's, that's, you know, when you have, um, you know, I would probably want to say, seventh grade on down, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, 
when you have those kids out there on the floor playing, Pat, you can have a team lose by 50. And 10 minutes after the game, those kids forget all about that game because that's all it was to them was a the game. You see? So when they come off the court and they put their clothes on, they're playing around, they're having fun, that game is over with. But the parents, they take it to a whole nother level. And I think what parents need to do is understand that it's not about you. You know, it, it's, it's not about you. It's about the child. It's about the kids. Have fun. So what they lose by 40 points. So what they lose by 10 or 20. You know, the fact of the matter is they were out there having fun, playing the game of basketball. Uh, you know, and, you know, let them have fun. Let them enjoy this because they can't go back and play the fourth grade again. They can't go back and play the seventh grade again because they're moving up. They're getting older and older. So let them enjoy it. Don't take away the joy of it. And the coach that's coaching them, he may not be the best coach or he may not, you know, uh, be the smartest coach, but he's not getting paid for doing what he's doing. You know, he's out there coaching your son, taking time away from his family or from the other things he can do because he enjoys coaching and he's coaching your child. But you sit up in the stands and you cussing at the coach and hollering down at the coach and, you know, things like that. So it's really getting out of hand. And and uh, I've seen it firsthand. I mean, you've had some pro players that's went on Twitter and that has posted things about what they've seen going on at AAU tournaments. Kendrick Perkins just did it a couple of weeks ago. You know, his son plays AAU ball and he went on talking about how crazy it is watching parents fight and argue. And, you know, it's, it's, it's parents on the same team fight each other. Now that's gotta be the dumbest, stupidest thing. You know, your kids are on the same team, but one kid plays more than your kids and you get mad. I mean, come on now, you know, so. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard some things in the stands being a referee. Uh, I'm sure you have, haven't you? Take yourself. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm muted because I didn't want no uh, feedback from me in the background. George, you said a lot. And as you were speaking, I was writing little notes. And um, there's so many things that I wanted to talk about. But I have seen so much. And, you know, since COVID, I had not worked in all over about a year, you know, since the pandemic and everything. And so within the last, I want to say month and a half, I, I really just came back. But the beauty about what you love, what we do when I when you have that passion, I jump full fledged in. I didn't jump in and do one or two games my first weekend out. You know, I had the opportunity to do 14 games. So that's a lot of different teams and a lot of different parents. It's not so much about the games but it's a lot of personalities that you have to manage as an official and so 14 the next week was 12 the next week was eight and the most the all every single weekend has been a blessing but the one weekend that i had and you know it kind of took me back i had a i had a young a mother in the stands i was having a conversation with her son and her son was a really good point guard, you know, but he was the type that had a lot of questions. You know, every time he transitioned up and down the court, he's asking questions. So what I told him is, you know, I want you to be able to focus on playing and I want to be able to focus on, you know, refereeing. He joked and laughed about it between us. And, I, and well, what I said, I said, you would make a really good official because you're very analytical. And he laughed and joked. And I said, but I'll answer your questions when we're done. His mom, who was sitting in the stand, said something extremely inappropriate to me extremely inappropriate you know that you know I was trying to get her to exit but at that tournament the tournament director had left the building long story short the games continued to go on but by the time the games were over her son the entire team and another team had an altercation and the mom that had initially said something to me inappropriate she was in the midst of the altercation along with her child. Wow, I'm not surprised. Exactly. And so 
whole the whole point, you know, because some people may have read the description, but you know, we want to talk about character. And that has been something that has really been missing because a lot of times, as you know, people tend, tend to think that talent, talent, talent. Character will take you places that talent won't take you. And it's so many players that yes, they've played in high school, or they played organized sports, but they can't play at the next level because of their character and because of the relationships that you have with D1 coaches, JUCO, every level. You did a post and I, and I, I actually shared your post a while back, if you remember that post. Be happy, every D1 players, professional players, as we know, are one percenters. Eric Thomas talks about one percenters. But the whole point is your child is getting a free education or a discounted college education. And so you shared that, but so often, so many parents miss that piece because as you mentioned, they're living vicariously their dreams through their child. Okay, so can you talk about that? The, the character piece and the conversations that you have with the different, because I know what all Ohio program, all Ohio basketball program bring. You all don't have to go look for anything. People are coming to you all. So please share that. I'm a mute. You have the mic. Well, the character part of it is that, you know, we don't, um, we don't accept that. Um, if we have parents that are acting very rude and, um, you know, as I will tell them, you know, you have to politely stop it or we will ask you to leave the gym. And that, that is a lot of our, any of our tournaments, we will ask them to leave the gym. Now, on the other hand, I try to defuse situations. You know, somebody that's acting way out of character, I will ask them, you know, can I talk to you? And see, I've been blessed uh, and, and God has gave me the, um, and I truly feel this way, that he's, he's gave me the, um, the favor that I can take, you know, people listen to me. So if I, if I ask someone, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a tournament here, was it last week? Last weekend. And a guy was irate, just out of way out of care. And one of the referees came to me. I kind of saw the whole thing, but not the first part. So the referee came to me, and then I'm going to ask you to touch on this too for a second. The referee came to me and said, hey, I want that guy out of here. Okay. Now, as a director, I, I, I want to, if you guys are the referee, if y'all the referees and you come to me and say, hey, I want, there's an a unruly parent, I want him out. Before I come and just say, hey, you got to go, I want to know the whole situation. You see what I mean? So, He told me, I took the guy out in the hallway and then the guy proceeded to tell me, well, coach, he cussed at me. He told me to shut the F up. And the only thing I did was scream down and say, you got to make, make the calls got to be right on both sides. And he turned around and told me to shut the F up. And that just triggered me and it made me mad. So I started cussing him out. Then he was cussing me out. So what I did was I said, well, do me a favor. I said, you got a couple minutes left till halftime. Don't say another word. Just go in there and sit down with your wife. If you can't do that, I will have to ask you to leave. You say, coach, okay, I won't say another word, I promise. So at halftime, I called the two refs over uh, and talked to them. And I know them both very well. And I told him, I said, you cussed at him first. He said, yeah, because he screamed down. I said, okay, I understand that. Sometimes you don't like customer, I mean, uh, uh, fans screaming down on the sideline, but if they're not disrespecting you, they're going to scream down. And so I said, you've been doing this long enough to know that a fan is, if fans do not like the calls y'all make, they may want you to make a call and they may say, call, make the calls both sideways, or that's a bad call ref. Or Cause I even say it to them when our teams are playing and the referees today, I'm like, come on, John, you know, that's a bad call. Come on, Keith, that's a bad call. And I think you know these guys too, but um, but I say you were wrong. I say you were wrong. 
You provoked him. But then you turn around and tell me to put him out the gym. But you provoked him and you started this. He said, you know what, George? I was right. Let him come back in the gym. I was, I was wrong. I mean, he said I was wrong. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I let it get to me. I shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. So I said, okay, it's all good. So I went up to the guy, called him out in the hallway. I said, listen, he apologizes. He said he was wrong, but I'm gonna let you stay. But I've been hearing, I was hearing you. You got to slow it down. Just, just, just go in there and watch the game and don't say nothing. Just do me that favor. Because if you start saying something again, it's going to get blown out of proportion. So I defused the whole situation. A couple of weeks ago, I defused another situation. Three times in one day. Three times in one day. But I, God has given me the gift to where I can go in and defuse the situation. People listen to me and they give me enough respect to... Uh, to shut it down. Because it's like this, really. It's not what you say to people. It's how you say it to people. You know, it's how I, I could easily say, come on, man, you got to get out. You got to get out of here. And then what's that going to do? Then he's already pissed off. Now me and him get into a shouting match. No, come here, man. Let me holler at you. Or I'll put, I'll put my arm around him and say, come on, man, let me, let me talk to you. Come on out here with me. Just come talk to me. Don't worry about nobody else. Just come talk to me. And I always seem to be able to defuse situations. And, and the Lord has blessed me with that. Um, and and uh, because I've stopped a lot of stuff this year, just this spring, I, 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 I put out a lot of fires. And I get tired of doing it, though. I will say that. But I just want parents to understand that people are watching. People are watching you. You know, I mean, you know, people sit back and, you know, you may be a cool person, but then all of a sudden you're acting like a complete butthole and everybody's watching you. Social media is something else right now. So what happens? Everybody pulls out their phones. You know, they want one thing. There's been some fights to break out. Oh, yeah, they love to do that. But your character is everything. People have to understand that. You know, don't, 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 don't uh, have people look at you in a certain way because you're one of those crazy parents. You know, the game ain't always going to go the way you want it to go. You know, just bite that bullet. And the worst thing you can do, and I'm not telling parents what to do, but I tell a lot of parents this, you know, you may not like what the coach do because a lot of parents come to me all the time. I say, you, if, if you don't like what the coach is doing, that's okay. But don't talk to your child about it. Don't be a negative to your kid because here's what's going to happen. You are your kid's role model. So you're going to be talking about the coach ain't this and the coach is sorry and the coach don't know what he's doing and this and that to your child. Your child comes back to practice or comes to the game and in his mind, all he knows is what he's heard you say. So now what? He don't listen to the coach. He don't respect the coach. He hears you in the stands. And what? The kid now is a disrespectful kid and is not getting the teaching that he should because he's not respecting that coach. So, you know, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on over this, but um, I think people need to really... Um, just relax and, and really let the kids enjoy the game. George, so you led into so many different things. So I have a couple videos and I want you to talk about this because I'm going to share this video and I want your thoughts on it because you just led into something. We are the, we are the student athletes role models as referees, as coaches, as parents, all of that inclusive. And the one thing I did some stats some years ago and the longest, wrong, the longest ride home for student athletes is after games, because I did it, I did it. I learned this from when Tyler used to play with you, the other teams. 
what the first thing we want to do when we get in the car is talk about the game the whole time. But what I had to learn to do, and I, I hope this is advice, you know, other parents out there, get in the car, just enjoy the ride. Allow the child, whether they're young or older, express what's on their mind. You just listen versus you getting in the car and then you allow your child to speak on every other kid. Because the one thing my children know, I say when they get to talking, once they're done, but what part did you play in it? What did you do? So they know I'm not the one because I, I don't look at it from a parent standpoint. I look at it as an official, from an official standpoint. But the rides home, what you just said is that parents are having a grown folk conversation with children. So now children are going back talking to you as a coach inappropriately because the parent then had these conversations in the car at home, you know, and that's what the kid know. They know exactly what you've shared with them. So there's a video where a young man, he actually punches a referee because he doesn't like the call. I mean, we've seen this, but I've when seen you, that video. Did you see that bit? Okay. I have it here. Play it again. Okay. Hold on. Let me let me share the screen and I'm gonna bring it up one moment. I got a couple of them. Let's see. Actually, hold on, George. Let me go back. I can bring it up. I tried to save all of these, so give me one second. All right, one moment. Are you still able to see me? Okay, perfect. Okay, let me go back to my history because I saved it and for watching later. All right, and I'm going to speed it up because it's like at the 121 mark. Okay, let me bring it up and then I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to fast forward. Okay. One second. Okay, can you see it? No. Oh, you cannot? Okay, hold on. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be about the 120 mark. The young man in the white, let's see. Here he comes. I can't see his number, but you'll see it. It's a young man clapping. I don't know what his number is, but he's the one clapping in the white uniform. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Let me stop the video. Well, but can you go back? Yes, let me go back. Let me bring it back up. Before the play ended. Yeah, I mean, when he, so, oh, you don't have to. So, 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 so he got mad because of a call and went up and hit the referee. What do you say to something like that? I mean, and the call was on. That guy should never, ever. He should never be allowed to play on that team again. And um, was that was AAU? No, it was a high school game. 
he should be kicked off that team. Not only kicked off the team, but suspended from school. That's what should have happened to him. And charges should have been filed against him. Yeah. Because you should never get that man because of a call that you go up and assault a referee. If that was my team and that was my player, go in the locker room, clean out your locker, leave your uniform by the locker, you're done here. You're done. Where do you think that came from? Uh, because you, uh, the point I'm getting at is you said we're role models. So the referee, it was actually, he pushed the player. He was, he pushed the player and the referee, you know, called it and the call was on him and he was mad because, but he clearly pushed the player before he even got to the referee. And you well, talked about role just, models. Pat, he didn't just start, that wasn't his first rodeo. Yeah. He didn't just start acting like that. The kid probably was a problem kid. Because you don't just, who does that? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of times I've seen players like don't like calls. I mean, last weekend, we had a very intense game with a rival, our 17U, and it was intense. And there was some shoving going on, but it didn't get to that point. I mean, I didn't like some of the calls the refs made. You know, but I had to tell the refs, y'all got to get control of this game. Y'all been letting a lot of stuff go during the course of the little melee, just pushing. We had to bring the coaches together, the two coaches and the referees. And we were like, hey, you've let this, the referee, and they was letting them play. Okay, they were letting them play. They're big boys. They was letting them play. But a little bit too much. And I knew both of them. And I told one of them, I said, Keith, you got to get control of this game. So they didn't. They let them play physical, aggressive, bumping, everything. And it got out of hand. And then after the pushing and shoving and the bench is empty, I say, hey, y'all got to get control of this game now. So then they say, okay, so we're going to start calling all touches. And this, and I said, Keith, I don't care whatever you got to do. Get control of this game. So you know what happened? They got control of the game, and it was a good second, rest of the first half and second half. And they, they called a lot of touchy stuff, but it's okay. They got control of the game, though. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's going to be times where I don't like calls or coaches don't like calls or, I mean, in heated situations like that was. I didn't like some of the calls they was making. But what I'm going to do, walk over and punch a ref because I don't like the call? Exactly. Exactly. And I, I find that, um, like you said, it didn't, it doesn't start because I'm, what I'm thinking about is I know you all have very high level players. And so it's going to be very, it's big boy ball. It's going to be very heated. And if you have aggression issues, you in there, you know, it's big boy ball. It's going to show up. It's going to show up and you're going to end up showing out. So I want to know for you all's program, this is to give, and if anybody catches this later and you're a coach or you're a parent, what do you all do within your organization, all Ohio, to have these discussions? You all going to be playing, the, I know you all going to play the best of the best everywhere else. You ain't the only big man. You ain't the only star point guard that everybody know about. You know, we're, And the reason why I'm saying this is I never forget being in, it was a LeBron tournament years ago, and we were somewhere down in Akron, Montrose, and a Benji had, this is when Trey and Jared and all of them was playing, and I happened to be refereeing at that time. I was there. Okay, so. It was over at Akron in the uh, recreation center. Yes, and I never forget, okay, I applaud Rhonda and Benji for a great job they've always done, you know, with Trey and Benji with his coaching it was like a whole entourage of people just hanging out and when they got done playing Benji said pack your stuff for all the boys we didn't come here for this we didn't come here for that and that just stood out in my mind 
game was over, your character has to supersede you in, on and off the court. So he, he quietly said to the boys, pack your stuff. We didn't come here for that. And the crowd was one way and he took them the other way. We here for business. Makes sense. You know, one of the things that our coaches and, 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 and as a program, uh, once you hit the ninth grade 15U, we have a group of coaches that's been with us for a long time. Um, that's coach high school and college. We don't bring different coaches in all the time. We have a group of coaches that's been with us for a long time. And these group of coaches, they don't let it, our kids um, get to that. I mean, they, oh, our kids play physical, they play aggressive and they get angry, they get mad. But our coaches teach our kids to play that way but don't let it control you, you control it. Mm -hmm. and, and even in the heat of the moment, um, our coaches have tell, tells our kids to uh, let them, let, let it take them out mentally. Don't let it take you out mentally. And so we try to tell kids, let your play on the court do all your talking. You know, you don't have to fight. If somebody's push wants to wants to get physical, just laugh it off. You know, just let, let them get the technicals. Let them get. So it's just it's, it's it. It really starts with the coaching and what the coaches allow the players to do. Now, if the coaches allow, if your coach is allowing you to disrespect, be disrespectful to him, then guess what? He, that player is going to be disrespectful to everybody else right. if he's being disrespectful to his coach. If he's not a coachable kid, and one of the things about us is that, especially me, I talk to college coaches every day. My credibility is everything. If a college coach asks me about a kid and the kid has a bad attitude, I'm going to tell the college coach he's got a bad attitude. It is fixable, but he has a bad attitude. Or I'll say, no, you don't want to mess with me. And college coaches respect my opinion. If I call a college coach and I say, hey, I got a kid for you, man. He's a bad boy and he can do this character from a great family, good guy, great character. You know, okay, coach, we respect your opinion. Thanks. I, I had a coach uh, from out west uh, yesterday. I was telling him about a kid. He said, hey, coach, if you say that kid is like that, then we're putting him on our board and we're about to start looking at him. So, but it's all it all starts at home and it starts you know with your coach because as coaches and i've coached for 38 years as coaches we are mentors mm -hmm. that's what we are you know i can get on kids all the time pat when kids walk past me with their pants down they pull them up because they know that coach howard is going to tell them to put them pants up and get on them but they also know that i love them and i care about them too because i tell them i love them and I tell them that I care about you. And I tell them, you don't have to do that. Why are you wearing your pants down your butt just to be like the next person down the street? Exactly. You know, so- And, and where so, did that come from? I mean, I know where it came from, but you know, as a student athlete- Everybody want to be like everybody else. There it is, right there. That's it. Just about seeing what I've done is none of my kids really wear their pants down their butt. I know that. I tried to teach them, I've taught them that, no, you don't do that. That's that's not cool. You think that's cool to wear your? Right. I mean, they all sag a little bit, but not like no, no, no. Right. no. But um, you know, and and then it's up to us to teach our kids. You know, I mean, to to instill that in in them, to instill, you know, you know, um, the right things in them. You know, and uh, me and my wife talk to our kids all the time, but that's a whole nother subject. I, that's a whole nother subject that we talked. And we got two boys just getting ready to go to college. I've got a son. They both just graduated last Saturday. Um, we got one that's getting ready to go to college to, um, that got a scholarship to play football. And then I got another one that's uh, got a full ride to UC that's going to be a doctor somewhere in the medical field or whatever it is he does, but uh, he's going to be. But um, 
we have talks with them all the time. So, so you know, it, it starts at home and it, it's, uh, you know, I would think that if a parent see their kid get out of character that on their way home or something, they might say, no, that's no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because so you never know. Here's, here's the other thing too. Let me say this real quick. With COVID-19, these games are being streamed more than they ever have before. True. Social media is something else right now. These games, all these tournaments are being streamed. College coaches can go on and watch any game they want now. Big time tournaments. Yeah. They'll go on and watch these games because you got, you've got uh, uh, um, um, all these different uh, um, social media, these streamers that's, that's out there taping all these games so college coaches can see them. And they're watching. So, you know, these kids never know who's watching them. They're always auditioning. We're, we are always it's auditioning. Listen, I tell kids all the time. It's a job interview. All the time. You're, you're trying to get yourself an offer to go to college, a scholarship to, 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 to play college basketball. You know, so when you go out and you play in these tournaments, you're filling out a job application. It's a job interview because they're watching you. They are watching you. I told a couple of kids that this week, I called one of my players this morning um, that his, his recruiting is heating up. And I told, I called him this morning and I said to him, Hey, have a good weekend. Ball your butt off. Play hard. Don't do what you don't do things you're not supposed to do. And because you know, they're watching. So, so, you know, it, 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 it's all on uh, it's all on us as mentors, you know, but I will say this too, Pat, there's a lot of coaches out there that are really not coaches. And George, that's a, that's a continuation story that we can get, you know, because you and I know AAU is big business. Not all AAU. No, 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 no. I say all. But, because but AAU as a whole. Oh, yes. as a whole, as a whole is a big business. And so when you said, I know, I know all Ohio program. There's other programs that I know that's, you know, it's a huge organization. It's made a great name for itself. So it does what it does. But then there's individuals out there that is giving people false sense of false hope, um, hoop dreams, selling parents a bunch of wolf tickets. So with that, I want to go back to what you said. We have a set of coaches. You said we have a set of coaches. So what came to my mind is when you have coaches just hopping from place to place to place for the wrong reasons, and then the student, like I know with All, All Ohio, I don't know everybody with All Ohio, but I know that there's set people that's, that are like legendaries within the organization. So the children know when they come, they, you know, this is what it is. It's a foundation. But then some programs, you got this coach today and then you got me tomorrow. You got the next person tomorrow. So they really don't get a system. And they got one person that has these values and another person with these values. That makes a huge difference. Coaching and also parent support. I want to ask you, a tournament that I did where it was a fight broke out. A different coach that didn't have nothing to do with it. It was like, he said to me, he says, or because you know, as the kids get older, younger kids, a lot of parents show up. As uh, young men and women get older, you don't have as much support in the stands. This gentleman said, I think he had a 16U team. He said, I make all the parents come um, to support their kids because I'm not going to be the built in babysitter when something break out. What's your thoughts on parent support? how it affects the character and what goes on with the young men and women at these games? Well, I think all kids should have parent support. I think, I think, um, you know, Pat, I have nine boys. So that kept me busy for a long time, but I supported my kids and, 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 and uh, I was there all the time, but I think parent support is big. I think, you know, kids look up in the stands and, you know, they want to know their dad is there. They want to know their mom is there. Um, and I think that's important. 
Uh, I think it's important that parents, you know, encourage their kids to play hard and and um, put in the work and and practice and you know and all the positive things to help their kid get better. Um, some parent support is not good because um, they're not really being positive to their child. You know, they're more of a negative than a positive, and sometimes they don't even realize it. But I think it is important to have parent support, but some kids can't because some kids play basketball and who knows where the mom is or, you know, where the dad is and the kid, you know, uh, you know, he gets a ride in with one of the other players or one of the coaches have to go pick him up or, you know, I mean, we've had that too many, many a times, but, uh, but when the kid gets there, they feel comfortable because they're around us. You know what I mean? They may not have their mother and father there, but they have us there. Right. So yeah, like they know that they can call, you know, Coach Q. Uh, he has such a great relationship with his players. They know they can call him to him whenever they want. You know what I mean? And that's the way it is. And I tell guys, hey, even if their mother and father is together, I tell them all the time, you know, you can call me whenever you want to. I don't care what type of night it is. If you need me, you call me, you know, and I want them to know that they can do that because I'm not just saying that because that comes from here for me. You know what I mean? Right from here. And uh, because I care about, you know, these young student athletes and that's what they are. They're student athletes, you know, see, so the difference with me and I can only speak for me is I don't care if you're an All-American or how good you are in basketball. You could hurt yourself tomorrow and never be able to play again. But you're still that person to me. You understand what I mean? So it's, it's, it's see, our young student athletes are very, kids are very, very smart. They're smarter than you, people think. They know if a coach really, really cares about them as a person. That's they true. know. That's so true. Well, they know. And, and, and they know what your level of caring is. They know if you're just coaching them, you know, your if own you're personal. coaching them, and then you leave them and drop them off, or after the game you leave and go home or whatever, and they don't see you again or hear from you till next week when it's time to play or time to go again. They get a text. Well, meet such and such a place. The difference is, is our coaches and our players have such a great relationship that our players will run through a brick wall for them. See, when people know you care about them, they'll play their butts off for you. That's true. And, and they'll go hard for you. And you can chew their butt out and they'll stand there and listen and won't say a word because they know that you're telling them something because you care about them and I tell kids and I've told kids, I'm not going to tell you nothing wrong. If I get on you or tell you something, it's, I'm telling you because it's what you need to know mm -hmm. to help you. I didn't wake up this morning and say, I told one kid a couple of weeks ago, I had to was kind of chastising him about something. He said, well, coach, he said, dad, you're getting on me. I said, well, do you think that I woke up this morning and said, oh, I'm going to get on such and such day today? This is the day that I'm going to just get on such and such. I said, no. I said, because the way you're acting, you know, get your mind right and get ready for the games today and stop all the BS. And, okay. After it was all said and done, he said, okay, coach, and had a good day. And then I put my arm around him later on that evening and said, man, you had a great day. Thanks. You know, that's why you, my guy, you know, so you, when kids know you care about them, you can tear them down and then lift them back up again. And it's okay because they know you care about them. And I tell coaches, and I've told coaches for years, man, you can get on that kid, but make sure you lift him back up too. Right. Don't, don't tear him down and then leave him tore down because then mentally he's done. Then his head is down. You know, how are you going to get him back up? But if, you, if, if you're going to get on him, then lift him back up. And, 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 and that way he knows that, okay, well, yeah, I did do wrong, but you've also told him that I believe in you. Come on, you can do this. 
going out there. When you're ready, you let me know. Then they go back out there and have a hell of a game. So it's all on how the kind of relationship that coaches have with their players, because a lot of times you're their dad. That's true. You know, in a sense, in a sense, they may not have a dad. They may not have a dad at home and you're the guy that they look up to and that. So let me say this real quick. A lot of young men out here and young ladies out here, they crave discipline. That's true. They want that discipline. They want that person to get on them and tell them what they don't need to do because they're not hearing it from nobody else. And they well, that's also- That's a fact, George. That is so they true. They also want to be lifted up. They want to hear that positive word coming from somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They want to they, be accountable yeah. for it. They want to be accountable. They don't call it that, but we call it accountability. And when someone says, I have a vested interest in you, and they know that they're sincere, and they know, like you said, it's not, well, you, you just play for them, and you really want to know that they're they're good outside of just bouncing that ball or throwing the ball, whatever they do, then they are going to be accountable because they know that you truly, truly care. So you're right That's about why that. I don't care about a kid coming up to me, which they do all the time. Sometimes it gets out of hand, but, you know, the players come up to me, coach, can I get a couple of dollars? Can you buy me something to drink? You know, when we're at the game, you know, in between games here, you know, if I got it, they got it. You know what I mean? I don't mind giving it to them at all. I don't. And, um, uh, but, you know, I mean, that's what we need more coaches to be. You know, uh, we need most of, we need a lot of them to be more mentors, um, you know, and I don't care what color you are. I don't care if you're a white guy coaching a bunch of black kids. You know, if you're going to get into it, get into it for the right reason. If you're a black coach coaching black kids, if you're a black coach coaching white and black kids, I don't care who it is, get into it for the right reason, right. not for your own personal gain. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got to care about these kids. You got to, you know, it, it's, but you know, I mean, we could have a part two of this conversation at another time because it's some deep stuff that we could talk about. It's just yes. like, like, um, it's just, it's just, it could get real deep. Well, you know what, of- George, I have, I have notes. I have, these are all for you that I haven't even touched because we just, it's a very, like you said, it's a very deep conversation and what you're sharing is uh, very valuable. I do have a photo of some all Ohio players that would cons- be considered legends in their own right and because we're speaking a character i want i'm going to bring up these this photo and it's a collage it's a banner that you all put together for a tournament i believe and so you don't have to go through every single player but pick a player and i want you to tell because every single player on this banner as they play d1 and i think every single person is playing professionally pick a couple people and say something about the character because the one thing I want people to understand is not just their talent have them playing as a one percenter you all see this these are one percenters and a lot of parents out there have hoop dreams they have to understand when you play at the professional level of any sport those are one percenters but what separated these young men from everybody else outside of their talent okay so let me bring this up Let me drop this down and I'm gonna move. Let's see, cause I got a couple different basketball. All right, let me bring it up and then I'll be able to share. Let me open the file, give me one second. It's taking one second for the banner to come up. All right, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And okay, you're going to know. Let me just slide this over. Okay, let you know, me share. I know what you're getting ready to show me. Uh, you know what I'm about? Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, let me share the screen and then my I'll son be put My son put that together. He did? Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, okay, let me hit share. It might take us a second. Let me know if you can see that. 
Yep. You see? All right. I and think I can, I can look in there and see um, the guy with the Miami shirt on to the right of me. To the right. Uh, okay. With the Miami uh, shirt. Number 11. Yeah, he is now a coach uh, for the for Miami. And oh, uh, wait, well, say this, George. Every single player here. So for everyone, introduce the man in the middle. I know who the man in the middle is. That's, and then uh, that's our director, uh, my partner in crime. That's <laughs> Jerry L. Watson. Has uh, started this program in 1986, um, and we are a program. We're not just a AAU team that gets together for AAU season. Uh, we have uh, fall leagues, winter leagues. We uh, open to kick off the high school season with a day full of high school basketball that is everyone's first game. We have shootouts. We have, um, um, we, we do a lot. We have previews, uh, you know, we, we do a lot. But a lot of those guys that's on there, um, it's, it's just so good to see those guys. If you can, there's some, I can't see all of them because the top part is. Well, that's Jared at the top. So I'm, I don't know how his head got cut off. The cells, I, let's see, let me see if I can open it up. But there's another photo oh, too. Can you see yeah. it? Is that better? Yeah, now that's the older, that's the, that, is that, is that the new one you just got or older one? I think this is. Did you get that off my? Did you get that off I my did. page? I got it off of your page. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so I, there's two kids on there that, well, there's one that's not on there right now that I'm going to talk about. Um, and there is one on there. Let me see if uh, I can zoom a little bit, just a little bit. Is that better? Yeah. So one of the kids I want to talk about is Karis Levert, uh, which is right behind Jerry. Right there. Uh, yeah. Karis okay. Levert, uh, who now plays for the Indiana Pacers, was traded from New Jersey to Indiana went over to Indiana and led him in scoring while he was over there. Didn't get a chance to play in that playoffs because of the uh, safety protocol. Okay. Um, but here's a kid that um, uh, when he was at Pickerington Central, um, didn't really come into his own until he was uh, – half junior and then his senior season when that bell uh, clicked off in his brain and he realized that it was easy for him. And at that point he became unstoppable. He had one offer at that time and uh, the rest is history. He ended up going to Michigan um, and ended up a uh, lottery pick in the draft and got picked by New Jersey um, and has had a, a really good pro career. Um, I could talk about Trey, you know, Trey, now that's really a story. Trey is, both of them are hard workers. Trey is one of the hardest working players that I've been around in all of my years of coaching. Um, a lot attributed that to his father, but Trey was just a guy that really wanted to be uh, good and Trey didn't have a lot of offers. You know, Trey only had a couple of offers and um, um, and uh, didn't get offered by Ohio State. Uh, because uh, George, can you go there for a minute? Because, you know, I know this story. I want people to understand that a lot of times locally people know of the super, quote unquote, superstar athlete. You come for the hype and the entertainment. But the truth behind it all, the parents that are their support system is really seeing what's available for the child to move from high school transitioning to the collegiate level. So can you talk about that a little more? Um, say that again now, Pat. Okay, so you know, like for Trey, you were getting, can you hear me? Yes. How we know he didn't get offered uh, OSU, but most people thought he did. And how he ended up going and being the man where he went. I want you to talk about that because most people are thinking, well, these superstar athletes as high school students are getting all these offers, but it doesn't always pan Trey, out. Trey, Trey was not a superstar in high school. 
Right. Trey was a good player um, and got better and got better. And what happened was actually Trey only had a couple of offers. Okay. Trey had committed somewhere else. And then um, he went down to Orlando in front of all the college coaches and had a great, great um, um, showcase and nationals down there for two weeks. Played out of his mind. Now, all of a sudden, you got some schools calling and Michigan called. Um, and it came, ended up coming down between Cincinnati and Michigan. Beeline saw something in Trey. They brought Trey in and he changed his whole offense, literally changed his whole offense for Trey. Um, and the rest is history. Trey was the, there was only one other player, and this is a, what, what a lot of people don't know. There was only one other player in the history of college basketball that did what he did. He won every single major award there was to win in, in college basketball. It was a clean sweep across the board. And the only other one to do it came from Michigan, too, was Cassie Russell. Those were the only two players to ever win every major award. And if you go to Michigan right now, they have a whole case full of all his, even though he has his own stuff, they have the duplicates, replicas that they put at the college. But he takes his all his own stuff home. And here's a kid that, wasn't an All-American, wasn't a five-star player, wasn't even a four-star player. But they saw something in him, and he went there. But his work ethic is what did it. And not only that, his work ethic, but his he had parents that taught him values in life that was so, so important. And uh, he is just a very humble young man. And, 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 and uh, uh, I'll give you an example. And then I'm going to go to one other person. Okay. Trey, Trey was with Dallas last year and didn't play a whole lot with Dallas. Felt like he should have um, when they started to pan, you know, when they came back to play. And in the playoffs last year, people that watched the playoffs, he totally bought out, totally bought out, had a hell of a playoff last year. He could, it could have easily went the other way because he could have easily mentally said, shoot, they ain't giving me no minutes. I'm just going to get out here and be selfish and just do whatever whenever they do give me minutes. And some players think like that. That's not what he did. He played within the game. Everybody know that's Lucas' team. But what happened was Trey went out there and balled out and helped them to win a couple uh, series. And uh, as, as for him doing what he did, being humble and being the young man that he was, he got rewarded with the contract paying him millions. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 and even now, he's not playing that much but if you see him on the sideline you see him over there cheering on his teammates of course I would too if I was getting millions I wouldn't care <laughs> right but I'm just saying he's over there cheering on his teammates so I'm gonna get to another guy that's not on here but if you look on my page Twitter whatever you Facebook you've seen a lot about him his name is Jalen I mean his name is um um Jalen Robin His name is um, Tate. What's his name, babe? Not Jalen. Jalen's his brother. But um, that's a shame. Boy, they would be okay. mad. Uh, what year did he graduate? No, he's with the Houston Rockets right oh, now. Oh, with the Rockets. Okay. And um, you said Jalen? No, it's not Jalen. 
His brother Jalen played at uh, Arkansas this year. Yeah, but that's a shame. And he that's a shame. I know I'm getting old. He played <laughs> in our program. And um, I'll tell you right now, it's a doggone shame. And I know I'm going to see him next weekend, too. And, okay. And he's going to be like, I hope you don't see this. Hey, like, Sean Tate. Hey, Sean. You know, I was going to find it for you, George. Because you know what? I pulled up his information before, and I didn't I didn't save it. But go ahead and tell the story. But here's a kid that uh, always been a, another kid that's a hard worker, came from a great home, um, and um, great parents. Um, and, uh, you know, his dad is a referee. So um, Jermaine Tate. But okay. um, he 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 had a great uh, career at um, Pickerington, wasn't a five-star player. Uh, he ended up getting an uh, offer to Ohio State. Uh, he went to Ohio State and um, had a good career, wasn't drafted. Okay. Right there? Wasn't... Yes, there he is. Okay. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. He, he wasn't drafted, um, so he ended up going overseas. He paid his dues. Yes, there he is. He paid his dues. He worked hard over there. He got an opportunity um, to work out for the Houston Rockets. And he did his thing. And they fell in love with him. Now, this is now this is during the pandemic time. Got this you. is during the pandemic time. And he was invited. He got invited to work out for them. And they fell in love with him. And they signed him. And he's now going to be part, I know he's going to be voted on the all-rookie team. He had a great season. They love him. And, uh, but that hard work, being humble, he's a very nice young man, a respectful young man. And he wasn't a, a superstar. He wasn't a superstar coming out of high school. He was just a guy that hustles his butt off, plays hard, does what he's told. And these are guys that have come from our program. And I could talk about so many, many more um, that we're just so proud of. And it's proud. Just, I'm so proud. I take all Ohio everywhere with me. Yeah. And, and Arizona here, it's all about all Ohio for real. Thank you. Thank you. And we're Welcome. just, you know, we have so many guys that we've put through uh, that we've helped uh, get to college that, um, that have been hard workers, that uh they just want to get there you know and they know that we love them and and i tell them all i love them and it's good to keep in touch with them we're proud of terry rosier you know who plays for the hornets we're just proud of all of them and and i'll tell everybody this jared sullinger will be back in the league next year okay uh, he'll be back in the league next year i know he is and he went overseas this year and had a great year and that's another story you know jared yeah. came home um he had got released uh a couple years ago, um, he worked his butt off. He didn't give up. Uh, he stayed humble as well. Went over to the top China League overseas and, and dominated. And uh, had a heck of a year. And now, you know, they're talking about somebody's going to bring him over next year. He'll be back over in the NBA next year. But, you know, there's a lot of success stories. So it's just, you know, just kids just have to work hard. They have to believe they can do it. They need to hear they can do it. And they need people to tell them that they believe in them. And, um, uh, you know, and, and, and they can do it. I believe they all can do it. And I tell them they can do it all the time. Well, George, I thank you so, so much for going through, uh, you know, all some, some is that I want everyone to know this isn't all of all of Ohio. But, you know, these are some, great examples and i wanted to share this uh the gentleman in the middle is you know the president um mr i always forget uh watson, gary, watson. gary watson and he's he's a staple this is his thing and you know i know him and george have a great relation if you go to george page you're gonna see jerry and george you're gonna see george with plenty of other people you're gonna see him you know with the young man trey burke anybody that watched dallas with his his dad or his parents but as I'm looking down, you know, I'm looking at all those sponsors. So when people ask me, how did I get started refereeing? And I look down to see my old association, OHSAA, the Ohio High School Athletic Association. 
Y'all know I, I must have been a part because you know, I wouldn't know all these initials, but that's exactly what the green is down there with the O, with the Buckeye. But um, we love basketball, but we have to be great examples. We have to be role models. We have to lead with character as parents, as coaches, as advisors, as referees, and as parents. Um, we come to the game to spectate and have a great time. We board said this multiple times. Social media is something nowadays, you all. And coaches, D1 coaches and scouts, they don't necessarily all, they're not going to always be sitting in the stands. They may send a representative or they're able to look at the live streaming. And how we show up as an official, how we show up in any of those capacities is seen all around the world. I have to even be mindful. George, you understand this when you said what a key other referee has said to the, to the spectator. Fans have a way, they may have done something, but it's sometimes fans will catch only your part. You don't want to be that person on YouTube or on what is it called? World Star? World Star that no one saw the first half, but they saw your half. And because you've gotten out of character, that's what people are going to remember the most. So, you know, I thank you so much. I, I we didn't even get to cover every single thing. Um, I'm going to show. We can come back and do this again if you want. I would love that. I would love that. What I said I was going to do. Well, there's two things I want to end with. So thank you for me, sharing. Can I, say, can I say something? Yes, real quick? go ahead. Go ahead. It's not just D1, but D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO, all the coaches be watching. So don't get stuck on it, D1, because there's so many other avenues for, you, for your kids to get to, to play college sports, no matter what it is, whether it's volleyball, football, baseball, basketball, no track, no matter what it is, there's, there's, there's all types of levels of college sports. So it doesn't matter what it is. And then I also want to share my Instagram and Twitter information if they want to follow me. Please do, George. They can follow me on Instagram at glhoward109. That's glhoward109. That's Instagram. And on Twitter, you can follow me at Coach George Howard at glhoward109. That's Coach George Howard at glhoward109. Okay, so George, I'm putting it in the chat. So you said on Instagram, it's uh, GL Howard 109. On Instagram is GL Howard 109. It'll okay. say George Howard, but it's GL Howard 109. All right. And then, okay, so that's Instagram. And what did you say on Twitter? It's Coach George Howard, but it's at GL Howard 109 as well. Okay. And then Facebook is just under George Howard. Okay. Now you you are going to be tagged here, so they will definitely be able to, you know, um, I tagged you and everything that we have. So they'll well, definitely how they'll know it's me on Facebook is is a picture of me and my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. and even on and on Twitter it's a picture of me in a sweater holding the basketball, and on Instagram it's a picture of me and my lovely wife as well. What is your um, title within All Ohio, All Ohio uh, program? Uh, with All Ohio, I am the recruiting coordinator and the sponsorship director. Okay, I'm putting that in there and sponsor. Now I know that's on your Facebook page too. Yes. And sponsorship director. Okay. There you are. All righty. Perfect. So if there is any individuals out there, you know, all Ohio, I can speak on their behalf. They have a great program and maybe you are looking to start something up or maybe you just want to talk to George, get some advice. Go ahead, George. One other thing, if you want to follow the all Ohio basketball program on um, Twitter, go to all Ohio basketball at all Ohio at all underscore Ohio. It's at at all underscore Ohio. That's all Ohio basketball. And, and that's the boy side. That's, is that true? Yep, it's the boy side. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Now I have it saved. 
Um, I'll have to go back and I'll put it in there, but most definitely you guys, they, there, it's an awesome program. My daughter came up, obviously she's a female, she was on the girl side, but we support both sides. All Ohio girls support all Ohio boys. If you do have a girl, young lady, a good friend of mine, Coach JB, uh, but yeah, he handles the all Ohio girls side and the program. One of the, biggest, one of the biggest girls program in the country. It really is. It really is. When all Ohio, you know, and I know you all probably keep hearing me say this, when all Ohio boys or girls show up, people know it's game time. You know, exactly. it's game time. That's what it is. So be ready to ball out. Uh, George, I'm going to drop down and I got, I have something I want to show you a picture. And then, because I want you to remind me what year, I don't even remember, because I was like, how old they oh, were. <laughs> right. And then we're going to wrap up. Young man, I don't know if you heard about this. His name is uh, Elijah Thomas. And El Elijah went viral. He's here in Durham. Well, I'm in Raleigh, but he is in the North Carolina area for his act of kindness. And I want to leave with that because he represents not just the talent, but that character piece, uh, you know, I, I want to share that. But let me open up. I'm going to share this memory. I'm so glad we still got this memory. Let me see if I can get this picture open. Oh my gosh! All righty, let's hit the share. See if you remember this. Can you see this picture? Wow. <laughs> Oh wow. my God, let me see. How long ago was that, George? I said, Ooh, that oh, that was, was, they were middle uh, school, right? Yeah, they were uh, 14. 14 you, okay, that's a better picture. Here's your daughter right next to me. <laughs> yes, so if no one, you know, cause I get people who ask, and they don't, they've never seen this. Has Chris ever seen this picture? No, send it to me. Okay, I'll send it to you. Yes. You wow. had a very good team. Those girls was balling out. What what was that? Did y'all win in that one? Is that what it was? Yeah, we won the tournament. Yep. Yes. Yes. That was those, a lot of those fun. Those girls was tough, man. They were. You had a really, really, really good team. And I remember when we first started in the gym, you know, remember you was finding locations and we had to initially hard cement. You know, it's like they had to work through all of that, but they, you know, you all did very, very well. And a lot of people, you, you did well that they made a great name for themselves. Um, and wow, just, that was, that was, uh, I would have to say, because to share, how old is your daughter right now? Tyler. 29. So we got like 29. Um, Brooklyn may be a year Wait younger. A Tyler's 29 now? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. So if Tyler's 29 and they were four, this was 14 you in this 15 years, 15 years ago. Ooh, we. 15 years ago. Wow. That's, that's a long time. Wow. Tashira got two kids and getting ready to have another one. <laughs> Wait. You just, like, if you look, okay, so we got Tashira, Tiffany holding the trophy. I forgot the young lady in the middle of. I, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, now her mom is still my friend on Facebook. Uh, I can't remember her name. I can't remember none of them's name. I see Brooklyn. her all the time. Number 20. I see her all the time. Brooklyn. That's Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes, that's Brooklyn at the end. sitting. Brooklyn's down. mom. She follows me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. She was tough, man. Yes. Real scrappy. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. she was tough. And, um, uh, Tina, um, Oh my God. Yeah, I see her. I see her all the time. No, um, I can't remember her name, but I see her all the time. And I see her. Ari. Uh, she's repping now, ain't she? Cool. Oh, which which number? Right here. Number 20. Number 20. Brooklyn, I don't know. I like, you know, because no, I have not Brooklyn. Brooklyn's at the bottom. Oh, number two. Oh, um, TJ. TJ. Yeah. No, it's T no. Uh, is TJ no? Uh, not TJ is a roughing. I know. I think no, um, not TJ. TJ, uh, they moved out somewhere, didn't they? Yeah. Well, she went to UC. She graduated um, from my yeah. old school, UC. Uh, but I don't know if she's still in Columbus. Now, now, this was her mom right here. That was not TJ's mom. That's 
your the your assistant coach that's what's her name's my jordan's mom that's jordan next to her mom wow I right just can't... right 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 so what's jordan doing do you know i don't know i have no idea i don't i don't remember the, the girl right here but she was she was a tough little player too which number oh, upper the number, bottom the one in the middle the white girl number 44 yeah i i forgot yeah she was holding down the paint <laughs> for real all of them played. That was a good team, man. You had a really good squad. I think and we it, won. I think we won almost every tournament. Man, you all was. Oh my God, we had so so much fun, and it was. You had a good uh, chemistry, good rotation. You know what I'm saying? How many players is that? Five. Oh, you got ten, and you yep. could just rotate in and out, in and out. It was a yep. good combination. It was a good stuff. Lady Thunder. Yep, Lady yep. Thunder. Did you come up with that name? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, so after them, you said, let me transition back over to the boys. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we was only, was we together one year or two years? We did two. I think we did do one. two. Yeah, It wasn't yeah. just one. I know it we was did two years. Two. But but the only reason I put that team together is because Ari, that's her name, Ari. Yes, Ari. Because Ari and Tara and, 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 and uh, Tashera, uh, Tashera used to babysit. Okay. Okay. And uh, you know, her brother played for me, her dad, Tony, and I right. know her whole family real well. Yes. And um, um uh they asked me, they say, let's put together a team, Coach Howard. And I said, No, I ain't putting no girls team together. And they said, Well, we know a bunch of girl good players, and and I guess that's what happened. I called you and you know, and called all them, and we, that's how we got together. We had a great time. That was some good, good memories we traveled a lot of places and we just showed up and show out so i'm gonna make sure i send this over to you um okay. and I'm, I'm gonna bring up let me uh go out of that and i'm gonna bring up one last thing because this is so noteworthy with this young man and i just happened to come across I, it's actually a story but let me pull it up and he was at the phenom this was about a week ago um can you still am i still sharing the screen no yeah yep. see it no i don't see the picture okay no worries hold on let me pull it up and this was a very nice story and at the end they talk about well about his character so much okay this young man elijah thomas you might want to share the story um he was at a rock hill uh when was this it was basically about a week ago can you see it george uh-huh okay so let me tell you what he did he hung back to collect the trash and straighten up the chairs on his uh, team bench. So Kobe Lewis, you know, didn't it really didn't think anything of it. Now keep in mind, this young man wasn't getting offers or looks or whatever. Kobe was so impressed by him, uh, what he was doing. It was just a nice act of kindness. So what ended up happening? went viral i'm skipping went viral kobe took the picture and i'm gonna show you the picture of how he was cleaning on monday over 162,000 views and 2,000 engagements it also has uh tangible benefits for thomas who struggled to find tr traction this spring as a class of 2021 recruit two division one college basketball programs cornell and george washington have reached out directly to thomas and his sheed wallace select head coach Patrick Cole to express initial recruiting interest. Last thing they said, they've never seen me play a single game, Thomas said, but they liked my character. 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 So let me show you. This is the little video clip. If I can bring up, I'm going to get out of, let me see. It's on Twitter. So let me click out of that and then I'll be able to switch the share. This is uh, Lewis did a 74, I don't know if I can do it. Ah, I can't bring it up. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Okay. You Basically, said enough. Yeah, he did a 74 second clip. Oh, this is it right here, George. Right here. Check this young man out. Everybody then left the gym. Oh, it's not going to allow. If you, I'm going to send this over to you. Everyone left the gym. And he was cleaning up that nobody was even there. And Lewis was so impressed. Like, who does that? Wow. He wasn't even asked. He just volunteered. He picked up everything all throughout the gym. Character well, will take places that talent won't. 
Well, he got two offers from it. Exactly. He got two offers because of his character and because of the young man that he is. And what that shows me is that that young man says, it don't matter that I didn't play that much or it don't matter that I don't have a lot of interest, but it does matter that, you know, I straight, I just want to clean up this place. He wasn't even thinking about nobody videotaping him. He, wasn't he didn't even, even know. Right. He just said he wanted to clean up and make sure that it looked right, you know, because he didn't like the way it looked, you know, and 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 he could have just easily just left the gym, had an attitude or whatever, just left. But that's not what he chose to do. And he's been rewarded for it. And, uh, um, you know, wouldn't that be a success story if we hear about him in college and and he ended up playing in the pros? Wouldn't that be something? That would be something major. But what this goes to show that everybody is watching this or for kids, wherever, you know, your character is anywhere is, is everything. And like I said earlier, you never, ever know who's watching you. That's it. Never do you know. And social media is powerful. To, to what you said, so Lewis, Kobe Lewis was up, I think, in the lows. Down, filming him clean. He ain't never looked up to even know. Then he goes home, you know, because of Lewis, their organization. He, he posted on Twitter, Elijah makes up all of this activity that he didn't even know about. That's something. All doing, all for doing. Uh, act of kindness, doing a good deed. He has, and he said, they have never even seen me play. Wow. What they do that at. That's a heck of a way to end it. Yep. So, George, I thank you. I want to tell Chris again, thank you so much, Chris, <laughs> for clearing this uh, schedule for us. George, there's so many different areas that we didn't even tap upon, but I enjoy every minute of having you as my guest. We'll um, tackle it again. I'll have you as my guest on my next show. Oh on my one gosh. Of my, on one of my shows. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm super excited about that. I thank you so, so much. I didn't. I knew it would just awesome. flow. What do you want to leave the people with before we close out? You know, I think I want to leave with this is that um, just remember that you are your child's role model. And the words that come out of your mouth are powerful to your kids. And just be careful what you say and how you act in front of your children because the way that you act a lot of times is the way that your kids will act at some point in time. So just be careful about that. And on another note, Stay positive as much as you can with your, with your kids that are playing sports. Let's support them in every way that you can. If they have a bad game, tell them it's okay. You'll get better the next game. Just learn from the mistakes that you made. And if they have a good game, make sure that you praise them for having a good game because you want to be your child's biggest cheerleader. That's very, very important. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I also wanna say this, when you told me that I can use any picture for the banner, and I was going through your pictures, I said, there's nothing more suitable. And I know that was for your son, sign, one of your son's signing day, because that's really what it's all about. It's about that moment of, student athletes signing to move on to their next journey. So I said, this is that bond of, you know, coach, parent, spectator is being there. So, you know, thank you for allowing me to be able to do that. I'm gonna tell you something about that picture. I didn't realize how powerful that picture was. Very much. And you know, and you know that if you, when you post something on Twitter, you can only you, can go in to see how many people has viewed and how many people has had interaction with your picture. Mm -hmm. That picture that you put on there, me sitting with my son and the comment that I made, which I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell you something. 
to be sitting at a table with your child while they sign their letter of intent to do something they've been working their tail off to do, to go to college and play sports is just a feeling that I can't even describe as a parent. I've had the pleasure of being able to do it three or four times. But I got 14,000. Wow. <laughs> over 14,000 people that interacted with that picture. That is 14,000. Because what that says to me is that when people saw that picture, it, they felt something or it was something to them to interact with that photo of a father and a son sitting at a table, watching his son sign that letter of intent. George, you got a lot of photos. I got a lot of photos. I said, this is the photo for this banner. This, that meant it all because I knew that I knew, I know that's your son. And I know that it wasn't even basketball. I knew it was football. But at the end of the day, all we do with travel ball, go here, go there and do all this stuff. At the end of the day, parents, this is coming from me. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Is them moving to that you know, if that's their passion, that identified, that's that's what resonated with my heart. And then for people who are maybe going through that journey, it was hope. That picture represents hope. This is not in vain. All, you know, you sitting there like, it's like you look over and you like, man, my man then done, done the darn thing. I but let me tell you, let me, let me close with this. My son, didn't have the kind of year that he wanted to have this year. And he always would say to me, I wonder if I'm going to get any offers if I'm going to be able to go to college and play football. And I always told him, well, you keep working hard. You know, I stayed positive with him. You keep working hard. You keep going to practice. Do what they tell you to do. Blase, blase. And it was, uh, when, when season was over, he didn't have one off. But I never, ever, no matter what, I never felt he wouldn't get one. Mm -hmm. And I stayed positive with him. And the reason he stayed positive was because I continue to make him believe that no matter what anybody says or whatever happened, what God has planned for you, can nobody gonna be able to stop that. He ended up with 14 offers. Wow. <laughs> wow. So from zero to 14. 14. That's crazy. So you know, and, and that's, that goes back to the thing of being, staying positive with your son. Don't put your child's future in nobody else's hands. Put it in God's hands and put it in your hands and you do what you have to do. Because I did what I had to do. I sent out his film. I sent out letters. I promoted my child. I didn't, I didn't, I did not wait on the high school coaches to do it or nobody else did it to do it. I did it because that's my son. So I sent out the letters, I sent out his film, and pop, 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 pop. And they just start popping. We started taking visits, and he was allowed to choose where he wanted to go. And of course, that's that's an incredible story. That's a feel good story, an underdog story, and that's a whole nother. So then, indoors. so listen to this, and I'm gonna let you go because I <laughs> okay. got to go. Chris probably like okay. So then, 
uh, a prep magazine called me and did a nice article. And if you go on my page on YouTube, I mean, on, on, on Twitter and down, on Facebook, somewhere down there, you'll see it. But they did an article on him. Mm. And um, it got like so many thousand views too. But it was, uh, it was crazy how a kid goes from where he was to getting right to getting 14 offers and getting a couple articles wrote on him and uh and he puts in he works out five days a week um he's put on 20 pounds of muscle but his mindset now is now i'm going to college and i'm going to play i'm not just going to stand around i'm going to play you know and 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 uh so it's all on you, parents. It's all on you to 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 be your son's um, role model and to uh, be that person there for them when they need you. And they may not have no offers when they come out of high school, but you send out your film, you send out the letters, you promote your child, and it'll happen. Good stuff. There he is. All right, George, give your son a shout out. And what school is he going to? Uh, my son is Jordan Howard. He's going to Wheeling University. He picked them. He picked them because they're a new program. They're up and coming and uh, um, and they're building something really solid over at Wheeling University of Football. So um, that's where he's going and, 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 and he'll, he'll do great. All right, you all, y'all heard it. Jordan Howard, Wheeling University. So if you all love football and you're looking for the underdog story, there, there you go. 14,000. But, but, but let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, I would, let me close it with this one more about okay. my other son. So my other son, he's going to UC on a full ride. Academic That's my school. school. Okay. So, so he, um, you know, he filled out all these scholarships in different places and different places was giving him money and he got accepted wherever he filled out. Right. So we already, we were kind of set on another school. It wasn't UC at first. Okay. And then all of a sudden, one day, he got that letter in the mail and UC told him, we're going to pay for every single cent for you to come to our university. So it's a beautiful school. So you just don't give up. You just keep believing. And my son, he he went to work for himself. Now, when you talk about when you talk about a young man that he filled out all the scholarships that are available for young people. You ain't gonna find many young people to do this. He went on and filled them out at every school and applied for scholarships and this and that. And he ended up getting he probably wasn't even expecting to get it i don't think was he babe he wasn't even expecting to get that but he filled out um what was the name of the scholarship it was for african americans okay and they gave him that scholarship and paid for every single dime for him to go to uc that's huge and he he did it we didn't do it he filled out all his own stuff. He was self-motivated. He was getter. determined. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, because he wanted, he didn't want his mom or nobody paying is no money for him to go to college. All right, give a shout out, George, because I want, I want people to okay, know. Okay, so I'm going to give a shout out to my son, Kyle, who's going to the University of Cincinnati, and he'll be in the medical field. He'll be a doctor or whatever type of doctrine he'll be into. And I'm so proud of my boys. Last Saturday was one of the proudest days of my life. Both of my boys graduated and it was a beautiful day. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll be empty nesters and we can't wait though. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Hey, wait a minute, y'all got the dim light going already. Y'all didn't already oh, start the process. It's Saturday night. <laughs> I know that's right. Well, I'm gonna say go Bearcats cause that's my old school. Um, yes. Go Cardinals at Wheeling. Yes. yes, go Cardinals. See, I didn't know that. But I'm going to be watching for both of them. I'm super excited for you, George. I know the journey, you know, you've helped a lot of kids. 
to help my daughter, just a lot of different things. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Chris. I'm not going to take up no more of you all's Memorial weekend, Saturday night. Oh, you ain't got it. <laughs> Chris said hi. Tell her I said hi. She's I take chilling her. over there. She's chilling. I understand. I see the lights down. I understand. So, <laughs> but yes, George, we have to do this again. I didn't even, I got about four pages. I didn't even crack this open. We just flow with it. You know, we love what we do. We'll do it again in a few weeks or so. Okay. That sounds we'll like a plan. That sounds like a plan. And, and just know this, if you all have something going on, all Ohio, something you want to share, drop it on my page, you know, drop yeah. it, you know, because I know a ton of people that's always looking for different things. What do you all have in the city for Pro-Am right now? What's going on in nothing at all? Okay. 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 Oh, it's been a minute, huh? It's been a minute. It was popping back in the day, though, Worthington League. But anyway, we ain't gonna get started on that. I know me. I'm gonna. I got be you. That'll be a right. That'll be a whole another story. Where yeah. do I? Where do you all play in the area? Where do you, Where do y'all? Because there's no hoop anymore. Where you all play? Well, different places. We play a lot of our tournaments at uh, Pickerington North, uh, Reynoldsburg, both Reynoldsburg schools. So, um, you know, with the pandemic, a lot of schools didn't want you in, but we've been playing at these schools for some years so they they let us come in which we're we're very thankful for that good stuff good stuff all right george well you and chris have a lovely night always good to get together with you know good people um we do what we do uh, i thank you very much i thank her very much you all be safe over these next couple of days because people are out driving around and um when you're ready for me to come on just let me know i got a whole bunch of referee friends that would love they get to hear from us women and everything. Yeah, I would so, like to do a show on show on reps because uh, I think that would be a really good show because people would, uh, uh, I think a lot of people would watch that and want to come on and ask a lot of questions. But <laughs> you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold back. I'd have to come at y'all, you know, and ask some real good <laughs> questions. And, and uh, but you know what? You just gave me an idea. I'll hit you I'm up gonna, I'm week. gonna have one, so you might as well have one. You know? Yeah, well, let's from do it. Yeah, we'll do that. Sound like a plan. All right, George, have All a lovely right. night. I thank you so much. I'm going to close out the Zoom and um, I'm going to send you a personal thank you. So I appreciate you for coming on. And again, you and Chris have a lovely night. I thank know y'all in much. the process of empty nesters, but just hold off a little bit, okay? We will, we will, we will. We can't wait though. All right. It's going to be right. a somber moment though. I know we'll both probably end up shedding some tears when we drop them wait, off. Wait, wait, I think my, hold on a second. I think my, my mic must have switched off. Hold on one second, George. Hold on. I can hear you. Muted. Hold, on, hold on, hold on. You can't hear me? Okay, George, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? All right, me? that's okay. That's okay, right. I couldn't hear I couldn't hear you. Say that last part again. You were moving your lips. You heard me, but I couldn't hear you. Uh, what did I say? Uh, I was saying oh, about the empty. I, Go ahead. I, said, I said, yeah, we'll, we'll be empty nesters, but we, we can't wait. I know we'll probably shed some tears, but you know, uh, you know, after that first day, we'll be good. <laughs> You'd be like, bye. We'll see y'all shortly. <laughs> I got yeah. you. See you at Thanksgiving. I, right, right. Well, enjoy <laughs> you all's evening, and I will talk to you later. Tell her I said again, thank you so much. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. All right, Pat. have a good night. Thank you, you George. Too. All okay, right, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.